Rami X back with another video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's segment slash part slash video. And uh, yeah, make sure to like this video to a friend and like so this or just anime content in general. Subscribe if you're new here as I want to hit 9,000 subscribers by the end of August and 14k by the end of the year. And with that being said, we can now get into the video. So in the last part, we basically explained how Boruto would be born, and we also explained how Sasuke would marry Karin. Um, I didn't say that he would be having children, but for the sake of the story, he will be having children, um, and he will be having about two. His first child will be named Raiju Uzumaki, a boy, and his second child will be Sarada Uzumaki, a girl. These two are going to be t twins, and you may be wondering why... Sasuke would even think about naming his child or one of his children Sarada. I really see no reason why he wouldn't. It was never stated that Sakura picked out the name. So, you know, that's just going to be his name here. And why the Uzumaki at the end? Well, I think that's pretty simple. I just see, you know, them taking Karin's last name. But at the same time, I feel like Raiju would take the Uchiha last name instead of the Uzumaki last name. And Sarada would take the Uzumaki last name. And for Naruto, he's actually going to have three children instead of just Boruto. So first off, he's going to have Boruto. Then he's going to have Himawari. But he's also going to have another child named Rizu. There's only going to be a two-year difference between Himawari and Boruto. And there's going to be another two-year difference between Rizu and Boruto. Meaning that Himawari and Rizu are both twins as well. Um, I hope that's not too confusing for you guys. But uh, yeah. So basically, I see everything going pretty similar until we get to the Chini exams, where a lot happens. Of course, the fights that we see there are probably going to go the same. But for the sake of the story, Himawari and Rizu are going to both want to become ninja and are going to both join the academy. I didn't really like it personally, how Himawari, you know, just didn't want to become a ninja. This, that. She was the youngest person to unlock the Byakuyan. I just felt like it was wasted potential. So in this timeline, she's actually going to be in the academy currently with her younger brother, Rizu. And yeah. On the other hand, Raiju and Sarada are about 12 years old, so they will be participating in the Chunin exams as they do live within the Leaf Village. As I explained how Karin kind of like lives in Leaf Village and... Sasuke still, you know, continuously goes on missions and takes his sort. In these tuning exams, I see a lot being different, but most of the fights, at least in my opinion, would go the same, except for a few fights. Those fights being Raiju versus Sarada, um, a, an interesting matchup, and Boruto versus Shinki. I see no reason why um, Boruto's not going to versus Shinki. Um, but I do see Boruto being a lot stronger. Just due to the fact that even though Naruto wasn't born with the Hashirama cells, I see no reason why they wouldn't be, like, you know, in his DNA, I guess you could say. So, you know, Boruto, you know, has Senju DNA. Not only that, but he has Uzumaki DNA. Huga DNA. So here I do see this support to being a lot more trained, if you will. And I see him regularly training with Sarada and Raiju, his kind of like cousins. They've kind of established a relationship where they're like cousins, basically. And it kind of makes sense since Naruto and Sasuke are similar to like brothers, kind of. And Karin's technically related to Naruto since she is a Uzumaki. We don't know how distant that is, though, but I think you guys get the point. But anyhow, this Boruto, I think, is actually going to have the Byakugan, but not only that, the Jogan. But in what may, in what way, you may be asking. Well, first off, the Jogan develops because, well, Naruto is the reincarnation of Indra, and Hinata, or sorry, not Indra, my apologies, Asura, and Naruto, and yes, <laughs> my apologies, and Hinata is the reincarnation of Hamura, at least to my knowledge, so, like, that Otsutsutsuki, like, reincarnation DNA, quote-unquote, is able to make the Jogon, so I see Boruto still getting the Jogon, but I also see him having the Byakugan at his disposal, and so I see him actually being able to master the Byakugan, since if Himawari did it at the age of what I know to be four, I don't see Boruto not being able to do it at 12. But it really just depends. Some people are different, right? But anyhow, Boruto's going to have the Byakugan mastered, and he's going to have the Jogan sometimes just come out whenever, really. It just kind of just activates randomly and at unknown times. 
so he doesn't really have like a master of it but he's talked to his family about the jogon but they've kind of just brushed it off except for naruto who truly does believe he has a jotsu a dojutsu similar to it since he has the jogon himself and the eye he talks about is similar to what naruto has so he just sees it as maybe being passed down or something like that anyhow boruto still loses to shinki but not really loses. I see him actually tying Shinki here because if you don't know, he needed the well scientific ninja tool first off to beat Shinki, where he used like the lightning purple lightning jutsu, which is Kakashi's the purple lightning jutsu, and he also needed Sarada's help, where they two v one Shinki. So you know, I, since this Boruto is much stronger, I see him actually being able to. A, tie with Shinki, and B, not actually use the scientific ninja tool just to quote-unquote impress his dad. I was going to go with the scenario where he actually did use it, but I feel like just doing that would kind of take away from this Boruto's character, and I kind of want this Boruto to be more of a, I guess you could say, wholesome character, rather than the Boruto that most people hate. Anyhow, says Boruto, I see being a pretty good or sorry, versus Sarada, I see being a pretty good fight, as they are brother and sister, or twins, technically. So, you know, brother and sister, same thing. Anyhow, Sarada getting into this fight would immediately activate her Sharingan. In my opinion, Raiju is more of a offensive person, wielding a sword, and already has about his 2-3 to three Tomoe Sharingan mastered, as well as having the reserves to match up with it. On the other hand, Sarada has the uzumaki chains and i do see her actually being able to have these why you may be asking if karin kind of only got them because of her like being with orochimaru and things of the sort that was kind of the reason why she had it and also you know just her being an uzumaki but anyway i see orochimaru actually doing the same experiment that he did on karin on sarada by karin's request since orochimaru is kind of good here he would do the experiment with a higher chance of success since Karin did survive the success rate would just you know automatically go up but he'd also do this experiment with the less I guess you'd say threat of Sarada actually dying anyhow Sarada has the Uzumaki chains not only that but she has the one and two Tamoe mastered and you know she has them ready at her disposal not only that, but she has the reserves to back it up since she is an Uzumaki. Not only that, but she has a decently strong affinity for Taijutsu and a little bit of a knack for Genjutsu. But in Genjutsu, Raiju basically outclasses her in most ways. Not only that, but Sarada possesses the ability to heal people with her chakra and the ability to heal herself with her chakra, contrary to her mother. And maybe I'm wrong, but I've never seen Karin actually use her ability to heal herself. I've actually seen moments where she's need to be she needs to be healed by others. Um, maybe I'm just wrong about this and just, you know, maybe I need to rewatch the series, but I've actually never seen Karin heal herself. So, you know. Contrary to her mother, Sarada has the ability to heal herself by biting her own chakra and just, you know, kind of like regurgitating it. I don't know. It's kind of weird and hard to explain. Anyhow, this fight would go pretty even for a while until Raiju started to not pity Sarada. Because in Raiju's mind, Sarada was kind of weak, but he realized that his sister was pretty strong as they would continue their battle. Eventually, Raiju would get into a proper fighting stance as he would unsheath his sword. Sarada doesn't really carry a sword, so she would just unsheath a staff that she carries on her back and a kunai which she carried on her left hand. She would then go on the offensive as Raiju and Sarada would have a heart-filled battle where they would complement each other's attacks. Eventually, Sarada would be backed into a corner as Sarada would decide to unleash her quote-unquote ultimate weapon this ultimate weapon was none other than her uzumaki ceiling chains which she would be able to indecisively grab raiju with and slam him to the ground with sarada would then be able to crush uh, him with these chains and basically just slam him to the ground with them and cut his body up with them raju would then stand up as he would activate his three tamoe sharingan pouring as much chakra as he could into it as he would basically continue on the offensive 
but he would realize that he was unable to, having to switch into defensive as he would try to block each basically strike from the Uzumaki chains. Sarada would continue to pour chakra into them as they would continue to get stronger and stronger. Right. Would then back up and do a few backflips deciding to use his quote-unquote ultimate weapon i did not speak on this earlier because i kind of wanted to make this a surprise but i have given a similar character like raiju this ability so if it's kind of familiar bear with me raiju would then grit his teeth slamming both of his hands into the ground as he would get into a kneeling like position sarada would hold off her uzumaki chains to wait for raiju's attack and see what he had up his sleeve as she would then use her chains in a defensive like manner and in a like blocking manner because she can manipulate the chains i do see her being able to create a sort of shield of sorts as raiju would continue to activate his jutsu raiju would then yell out chakra susa no raiju really looks up to his father sasuke and has seen him use some of his strongest attacks like most notably Almighty Push, the Renegon, six pass abilities, to name many things. Not only that, but the Susano. Raiju actually really likes the Susano, its design, and everything of the sort. So ever since the day that he witnessed his father do it when he was six years old, he tried to mimic it with a jutsu because he knew that he wouldn't just, you know, just, you know, get the Mangekyo Sharingan because it was very hard to unlock and the circumstances were kind of grim to say the least. So he decided that he would mimic a jutsu that the Mangekyo Sharingan can do if you have both of them, which is known as the Susano. As Raiju yelled out Chakra Susano, he would remember every single time that his father had showed him a jutsu and every single time that he was amazed at the jutsu he would remember the hard work that he put in to even make sad jutsu that he's about to release the chakra susano and would just remember how he had to bite tooth and nail just to you know master such a jutsu the whole stadium would gasp as chakra would pour out from raiju's body maybe you guys noticed it while i was talking maybe you didn't but raiju actually hasn't used any strong or high skill jutsu in this fight he's only been blocking and striking in this battle striking he would be striking soccer or sarada my apologies and sarada's chains and things but speaking about sakura she actually does have a family who you may be asking with rock lee it was never stated if well rock lee actually had like a wife and well, that wife is going to be soccer in this timeline. Sure, they're not going to have the strongest of children, but their child is going to be Meadow Lee. I'm not really sure on the circumstances of Meadow Lee and, her, and his mom, sorry. Um, but his mom in this timeline is going to be Sakura, and you guys get the point. Anyhow, back to the battle. A massive Susanoo-like being would appear, and this did not look like some ordinary susano it looked like the first stage of the susano where it's kind of like just a rib cage as it would then start to grow arms would then appear as legs would then appear as well a head would then form as horns would come to the skull of the head this was a blue chakra susano raju would then smirk as he would ask sarada if she truly does believe that she can still beat him Sarada would nod her head, getting into a fighting-like stance, as she would tell Raiju that she believes that he can, or that she can beat him, and that he will fail. Raiju would nod, uh-huh. His Susano would then expand, as it would now start to take on the form of a perfect Susano. Sarada would then drop her jaw, just for a moment, as she would make sure that her stance did not falter, so that Raiju could not pick up any weaknesses in her defense. But it was too late. Raiju's three Tamoli Sharingan already realized that she had, you know, been scared. She had been frightened. She had been surprised by Raiju's attack. Raiju would then smirk. Now, take this. Raiju would then move the hand of the Susano, which would slam into the arena's surface and ground, whatever you want to say. Basically, the bottom of the arena, slash tuning exam arena, whatever you want to call it. This would destroy a 
fraction of the arena, but it would only destroy where the Susanoo had hit. He had been able to perfectly regulate the chakra just to where he was trying to attack, as Sarada would jump away from the blast, and her shield of adamantium ceiling chains, or, you know, the Uzumaki's chakra chains, would be able to easily block the attack. After that, Sarada would realize the destructive power of this thing, but as long as it was only on that level of destructive power, she knew that she'd be pretty fine, as Raiju would then smirk. Sarada, before fighting you, I thought that you were weak. I thought you were my weak twin, to say the least. But seeing your strength now, seeing how smart and how strong you are, and seeing that you are not useless, you are not weak, has shown me that I am not to hold back against you. So I apologize if this is rough, my sister. Now, Susanoo Arrow, Chakra Style. Raiju would then pull his hand back and then forward, similar to a punch, as the Susanoo would then create an arrow in its hands as it would fire it. This chakra arrow would then be sent flying towards Sarada as it would break right through the chains and be very close to actually stabbing Sarada. Sarada would be surprised that she was technically almost killed by her own brother as she realized that this was the Trinity exams. Things like this could happen. Things like this were in some cases meant to happen as she would get up immediately choosing sorry for any background noise immediately choosing to step back and basically run away yes you may see this as being you know bad yes you may see this as being a wimp whatever you want to call it right as she, but she would run away she would then push Chakra to her feet as she would run as fast as she could in circles around Raju. Raju would pick up on what she was doing as he would see sweat fall down from her forehead. So he would decide to continue her little trick, if you will. She would then continue to run around Rizu as we now have a time skip of three minutes. After these three minutes, Sok. Rada would decide that she had enough chakra now in her feet and enough speed to deliver a strong enough attack to send Raiju flying, at least in theory. She would then kick Raiju, sending him f backwards, basically. By that, I mean he just goes backwards. But it wasn't enough to actually send him flying, nor knock him down, or anything of the sort. But it would send him backwards a little bit, destroying a piece of the arena as... He he would tell Sarada that her kicks aren't too bad. Sarada would then smirk as she would say that she's not done, getting up into the air as she would then slam her kick into the Susanoo's head. This would then make the Susanoo have a small dent and a small crack on its head as Raiju would immediately lift up his hand to finish off Sarada. Sarada would then start to block as she would create her adamantium ceiling chain with what was left of it. As her adamantium ceiling chains at the moment were kind of on a bit of a downtime, if you will. But that, I mean, they were kind of like restoring themselves because they were just kind of like blown through and like kind of broken just a little bit by Raiju's attack. Sarada would then block with this and chakra protecting her of her own as Raiju would then create a sword with his Susano and another sword both in his Susanoo's right and left hands, as he would slash Sarada. A few seconds would then pass, as dust was created from the attack, and the smoke slash dust would disappear. Sarada was on, now on the ground, and Raiju was now on his knees, panting heavily as his Susanoo would disperse. Raiju would then fall to the ground, as he would continue to breathe heavily. <sighs> Raju would breathe. The proctor would then jump down, seeing that Raju was still, you know, mobile and was still, you know, not knocked out or, you know, not passed out, as he would then declare Raju the winner. And this is not a tie, though it kind of was similar to a tie, but if Raju didn't waste any time, he could have easily defeated Sakura. Well, semi easily, but you get my point. Anyhow. Naruto would then congratulate his, well, kind of grandson-ish, like, nephew-ish, you know, you get the point, um, on being able to 
pull off such an attack, as he would also congratulate Boruto on being able to pull through the tuning exams, though he did lose to Shanky. And Himawaru would also congratulate her older brother, even though he did lose, but Rizu really didn't care. He saw Boruto as a bit of a quote-unquote weakling, as Rizu was even a bit stronger than Boruto in some categories, even though he was much younger than him. Anyhow, we now have a new threat, which would basically just... In and what and who is invading? Momoshiki. You see, Momoshiki's invasion is a bit... I guess you could say later in this timeline, as he's coming a lot later. And either way, you know, that's just how it's going to go in this timeline. As if it was the canon timeline, he would have come much earlier in the Boruto and just the Shuni exams in general fights. Anyhow, Momoshiki would appear as immediately people like Sakura, Shino, etc., etc., would get all of the civilians away from the fight and would heal anybody who was hurt by rocks and, you know, debris and things of the sort. <clears throat> Anyhow, excuse me. Anyhow, Naruto would then decide to basically fight Momoshiki with Sasuke stepping in as well as Sasuke was watching his children fight in the Trinity exams. He would then tell Raiju and Sarada, as well as Boruto, who was basically behind him, that they all did a good job in the Trinity exams and that they should get some rest. He would then immediately fight Momoshiki with Naruto, as I do see them doing extremely well here. Um, there is... No reason why I really have to explain this, but if they were able to take on a fused Momoshiki who had Kinshiki inside of him, technically, you 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 know what I'm trying to say, um, inside of him technically, and they fused, I see no reason why he wouldn't be able to take out Momoshiki, that being Naruto, with Sasuke at his side, and they're both at 100%. Because they did that both at 50%, so what do you think is going to happen if they're both at 100%? I see no reason why they're losing this fight. Either way, they would eventually push Momoshiki to a far enough extent so that they basically know that they were that they were going to lose as they had one other option to fuse, as they would, but it really wouldn't do anything because at this point, Naruto and Sasuke are about like 85% of their chakra, not too tired out, and, you know, they're strong enough to defeat Momoshiki fused with ease. I think each of them alone would be able to do it at this point, actually, especially since this Naruto is much stronger and this Sasuke is much stronger. Anyhow, we would then see Sasuke continue to congratulate his children and tell them that they should strive to become high figures in society one day. But with that being said, I do still see the events of the manga playing out. And if you don't know the, what happened in the manga, well, basically, this Osusutsuki comes, right? Um, I won't disclose his name in case you guys haven't caught up on the manga or anything of the sort. But with that being said, I actually do see Naruto defeating Sato Tsuzuki and um, the Leaf Village, you know, being saved by Naruto, but not only Naruto, but Sasuke as well. I see the boy that Naruto's kind of fostered, if you know who I'm talking about, um, not going rogue and a lot being different. But with that being said, I just see everything going peacefully and I see Sarada's dream still to become the Hokage, as I see no reason why that would change, but I also see her wanting to do it so that she's recognized by most people. I also have this theory that two people are Hokages like of each bloodline and if you don't really know what i mean let me explain it the first and second hokages were both senjus the third hokage was not a senju but he was a saratobi okay okay minato and naruto were both technically you know related uzumaki and namikaze like well minato was naruto's dad you get my point and then the sixth hokage was technically kakashi but we exclude him from the bunch because well he makes the argument a bit faulty but anyhow the seven gold gaga was then naruto which would make the minato and naruto being related thing make sense i then think that the eighth hokage is not going to be sarada because well it's just not going to be but it's going to be konohamaru this would then mean that there was another saratobi being hokage and that there's now two saratobis who were hokage in the timeline e bear with me now we would then see Sasuke, not Sarada, Sasuke, become Hokage. Why, you may be asking. I see to just keep the village in, you know, in good shape. I see Naruto just stepping down from the high amount of work, you know, 
then Konohamaru comes in, right? And then Konohamaru may either just not like the stress and something might just happen where he just doesn't want to be Hokage, right? Where then who steps up? Easy. Sasuke. Sasuke steps up to basically mentor Sarada and teach her what it means to be Hokage with Naruto and Konohamaru, who would then make it so that Sarada knows and understands, as Sarada would then be given the role of Hokage at the age of about, like, 20. I think this is pretty reasonable. As Sarada, at this point, would have the three Tomoe Master. She'd be, like, easily Kage level plus, um... And uh, I just see that being a good situation, as there would then be two Uchiha's who became Okage. Two Senjus, two Saratobis, two technically Uzumakis, and two Uchiha's. You know? That, and that's just how I feel like it's going to go, because it like makes my theory true, and that's how I want this tenuity to go, and yeah. But with that being said, I hope you guys all enjoyed this um I'm going to make this into an all-part series, I believe. If not, I apologize. But with that being said, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Make sure to like, share the video to a friend. Like, so this is just the content in general. This is the finale or the grand finale, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this series. It was a pretty fun ride with this one. I think I've, this series has only been out for a few days. But I did double upload this series for a few days. So it makes sense that it was finished uh, fairly quickly, if I will. Or if... I will say so myself, or do say so myself. It was finished in five days and ten hours at the time of recording this. So if you guys didn't mind the speed of which I completed this series, but I think it was because I was having so much fun with it, and I was really able to be really creative with Naruto and his dojutsu, Sakura and her decisions, Sasuke and his path, you know, um, Sarada becoming Hokage, Konohamaru becoming Hokage, even Sasuke becoming Hokage, and I think I just made the right decision here. Um, I was really able to be creative with the Raiju versus Sarada fight, and I just enjoyed this making this series a lot, so uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to do so on a platform. Um, make sure to check out my second channel down below. I hope you guys didn't, um, you know, I hope you guys didn't mind this series, and I hope you guys all enjoyed it. But with that being said, my next series I already kind of have planned, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy that just as much as I do. But with that being said, Rami X... <sighs> Loves you all and Ron.